Sometimes, first aid can be as simple as gently cleaning a fresh scrape on your arm and covering it with a bandage. Other times, it could be as dramatic as helping a co-worker in out of the sun and treating them for heat exhaustion. In this program, we'll discuss some of the injuries and illnesses that you could encounter on a job site or even at home. We'll describe the signs and symptoms you should look for, talk about steps you should and should not take to provide basic first aid, and identify situations where you should call for emergency medical assistance. But one thing that's important to know in all situations is where the first aid kits are on every job site, in the project trailer, a Joe box, wherever. You don't want to be running around looking for one in the midst of an emergency. So take a walk and locate them today. Our ability to see is precious, so it's important to know what we can do to safeguard our vision and avoid making things worse when we deal with eye injuries. For example, if you get a small particle of something in your eye, do not rub it. This can result in a scratch on the eye surface. Instead, allow the eye to flush the particle away naturally with tears. You can help by blinking the eye repeatedly and pulling your eyelid out gently then letting it slip back into place. For stubborn particles, try rinsing the eye with water or artificial tears. If that doesn't work, see a doctor. Cleaning solutions, solvents, and other chemicals can cause serious burns if they get into our eyes. If you get splashed by one of these substances, stay calm and keep your eyes open. Closing them traps the chemicals against the eyes where they will cause more damage. Instead, go to the nearest source of clean water on the site and rinse the affected eye. Hold it open with your fingers. Continue rinsing for at least 15 minutes if possible. Then call for medical assistance. When seconds count, you don't want to have to go searching for emergency contact numbers. Make sure you know where to find them quickly. Even better, program them into your phone. If a large object, such as a piece of glass, splinter, or nail becomes embedded in a coworker's eye, do not try to remove it. Pulling it out could cause further damage. Instead, call for medical assistance immediately. Cover the affected eye with an eye shield or the bottom half of a paper cup and secure it lightly in place. Then wait for the EMTs or get to a doctor. Cuts, burns, and abrasions are some of the most common injuries on a job site. Most minor cuts and scrapes may bleed a little, if at all. Clean them by rinsing with warm water. You can also gently wash the area around the wound with soap, but don't get soap in the wound itself. Then pat the area dry, apply antibiotic cream, and cover it with a sterile bandage. When bleeding does occur, press a clean cloth tissue or piece of gauze directly over the wound to stop it. If blood soaks through, don't remove the covering. Put more on top and continue to apply pressure. When bleeding stops, cover with a sterile bandage. Later, you want to clean and redress the injury. To remove the scabbed bandage material, soften with warm saline solution and proceed slowly, or see a doctor. Serious wounds require medical attention. Call 911 when the wound is deep or has gaping or jagged edges. The bleeding will not stop or blood is spurting from the site. It's important to remember that coming into contact with another person's blood could infect you with a blood-borne disease such as hepatitis B or AIDS. So avoid contact with anyone's blood but your own. Before assisting a co-worker with a bleeding injury, Always put on a pair of sterile gloves. There should be a pair in your first aid kit. Burns require a different approach. Since even minor burns can be very painful, hold them under cool but not cold running water to ease the discomfort. You can then apply moisturizing cream, aloe vera gel, or a burn treatment product. 
If a blister forms, try not to break it, but if it does break, leave the skin in place. Clean the wound gently with soap and warm water. Then apply antibiotic cream and cover the area with a gauze bandage. You should be able to find all the supplies you need to treat minor burns in your first aid kit. For more serious burns with large blistered areas or charring, call 911. While waiting for help, you can comfort the victim by elevating the burned area and applying a cool, moist bandage. Do not immerse major burns in cold water. This can cause hypothermia and shock. Most strains and sprains, and all fractures, should be considered serious injuries and should be evaluated by a doctor as soon as possible. For minor strains and sprains, you can help to reduce swelling by remembering the acronym RICE. Rest, ice, compress, elevate. To rest an injured limb or joint, simply don't use it. Keep weight off it. Apply ice for 20 minutes every hour. Compress the injury by wrapping the joint or limb in an elastic bandage and elevate the area so that it's above the level of the heart. Begin rice therapy immediately after an injury and continue it for 24 to 48 hours or until you see a doctor. More severe injuries require different measures. Call for emergency assistance immediately if a person's limb or joint appears to be deformed, a bone is protruding from their skin, or you think they may have broken bones in their head, neck, or back. You should also get help if the victim feels severe pain or numbness, can't move the injured joint or limb, or the limb buckles when they try to use it. In these cases, don't move the person unless it's necessary to prevent them from suffering additional injuries. Don't try to realign a broken bone yourself or push in a bone that's sticking out either. If the injured person feels dizzy, is breathing rapidly, has pale, clammy skin and enlarged pupils, they may be going into shock. Shock is a life-threatening condition that occurs when your system tries to cope with trauma by redirecting blood flow within the body. This can cause some organs to get too little blood and can result in organ damage or even death if nothing is done to stop it. If you suspect a co-worker is going into shock, call for emergency assistance if you haven't done so already. Help them lie down. Elevate their legs and feet slightly if possible. Cover them so they stay warm and stay with them until help arrives. When a person is having a heart attack or going into cardiac arrest, it's a serious situation. Their life is in immediate danger. A heart attack occurs when the blood supply to the heart muscle stops and the muscle tissue begins to die as a result. A victim of a heart attack usually feels a sharp pain in the center of their chest or between their shoulder blades. Often mistaken for indigestion or heartburn, the discomfort may spread to the shoulders, neck, and arms as well. Other symptoms of a heart attack include shortness of breath, sweaty or clammy skin, lightheadedness, nausea, and vomiting. If you believe someone is having a heart attack, have them sit down. Loosen their clothing, especially at the collar. Ask them if they use any medicine, such as nitroglycerin, for a heart condition. If they do, help them take it immediately. If the pain does not stop within three minutes of taking their medication or they don't have it with them, call for emergency medical help. If the person suddenly stops responding to you or stops breathing, they may be going into cardiac arrest. This is when the heart either begins to beat abnormally or stops beating completely. Tap them on the shoulder and shout, are you okay? If they show no reaction, have someone call 911. Begin CPR immediately or use an AED, Automated External Defibrillator, if one is available and you know how to operate it. 
CPR and the use of an AED can significantly increase the victim's chances of survival. So if you don't know how to perform CPR or use an AED, get help from someone on the site who does. And consider getting trained in these skills yourself. It could save a coworker's life. Choking occurs when a foreign object, usually food, lodges in your throat or windpipe and prevents you from breathing. A person who is choking will be unable to talk. They may cough and gag, make squeaky sounds when trying to breathe, clutch at their throat and make frantic gestures. Unless the blockage is removed, they can lose consciousness and die of suffocation in minutes. So if a coworker begins choking, you need to help them immediately. Have someone call for emergency assistance if possible. If you are alone with the victim, call for assistance after you help them. To clear their airway, use the 5 and 5 procedure. Begin by giving 5 blows to the victim's back. Stand beside the person, place one arm across their chest for support. Bend them over at the waist so the upper body is parallel with the ground. Deliver five separate back blows between the shoulder blades with the heel of your hand. Then perform five abdominal thrusts. Standing behind the person, wrap your arms around their waist and lean them forward slightly. Make a fist with one hand, position it above the person's navel and grasp the fist with your other hand. Press hard into the abdomen with a quick upward thrust as if you are trying to lift the victim off their feet. After delivering five abdominal thrusts, give five more back blows. Continue alternating between them, five and five, until the blockage comes out. If you begin the choke and no one is around to help you, you can perform abdominal thrusts on yourself. Place a fist slightly above your navel and grasp the fist with your other hand. Deliver quick inward and upward thrusts against your upper abdomen. Another approach is to bend over a hard surface, such as a work table or the tailgate of a pickup truck, and thrust your upper abdomen against it. Keep it up until the blockage is expelled and you can breathe freely again. Our body has automatic cooling processes that normally bring our temperature down when we get overheated. But sometimes those processes get out of whack, and when they do, heat-related illnesses such as heat exhaustion and heat stroke can occur. For example, sweating helps cool us through evaporation, but the process also drains our system of the water and electrolytes that keep our body functioning normally. When our water and electrolyte levels get too low, we begin to suffer from heat exhaustion. Symptoms of heat exhaustion include excessive sweating, cold, clammy skin, headache, dizziness, weakness, and nausea. If you believe a coworker is suffering from heat exhaustion, get them into a cool or air-conditioned area. Loosen their outer clothing. Have them drink cool liquids, such as water or sports drinks that contain electrolytes, but nothing that contains caffeine or alcohol. Then cool them down by spraying or sponging them with water, fanning them, or applying ice packs if they are available. If the victim doesn't recover within 60 minutes, they should be taken to a clinic or emergency room to be evaluated by a doctor. Sometimes the body's natural cooling system can break down completely. Then we stop sweating and our temperature can go through the roof. This is known as heat stroke. It can severely damage internal organs, including the brain, and can even be fatal. The skin of a heat stroke victim will be hot and dry. They may stagger and appear to be confused. Eventually, they may have seizures and lose consciousness. If you suspect someone has heat stroke, call for medical assistance immediately. Get the victim out of the heat and give them the same cooling treatments as for heat exhaustion. Stay with them until help arrives.
As we've seen, there are a number of ways that people can get sick or injured on a job site. But there are also ways we can help them by using basic first aid procedures. Let's review. You should know how to use first aid to help treat minor illnesses and injuries. Locate the first aid kits on your job site and know how to use the supplies in them. Learn to recognize injuries and medical conditions that require emergency assistance. Make sure you can find local emergency numbers quickly. Program them into your phone. Know how to use the abdominal thrust and five and five procedures to help someone who is choking. Look at getting trained in CPR and how to use an AED. It could save a life. By knowing when someone needs first aid and what you can do to assist them, you can help minimize the impact of a co-worker's injury or even save a life.